After a long time, I'm back again. I'm sorry about the delay in getting back with videos. Um, just been a wee bit busy with one thing or another. Uh, this video is a little bit on the different side. This is showing something which I've been working on for quite a while now. And, um, well, it's sort of coming together slowly. I'm still ironing out a few problems, but I thought I'd show you what I'm doing here. This is, if you remember from earlier videos, this is a Super Cobra board, which has been made from a scramble board um, and I, I, I repaired it using videos obviously at the time and you can see it's running away quite happily here um, there's the boards there you see that's my super cobra boards um, and I've got it hooked up to my tester and basically it's running as you'd imagine it's going all fine as you can see I came to sort of the conclusion it would be really nice if you could actually stop this game somehow or other or you could do other things with it rather than just have it running the game. It might be useful for debugging purposes, useful for finding other faults. So I sort of set about trying to do something with it and I sort of made it do it. So for example now if I wanted to stop the game I can just stop the game. As you can see it's stopped. If I want to start the game I can start it again so you know that that's pretty good you know you can just stop it start it if I want to reset the game I can reset the game so this is all happening without me interrupting the power supply or doing anything at all um, it's just a normal game running and all I'm doing is clicking buttons um, how I'm doing this is if you've got the board and then going to the front of my tester I have another board. This board here is the Z80 emulator board which I'll be working on. Um, Silver Fox uh, has very kindly, uh, or Sarge, some people know him as, has very kindly laid out the board for me and made this board and I'm actually debugging it and working on it at the moment. Uh, it didn't obviously work at first, but we're getting there slowly. You can see there's a few alterations to it. Um, but this board basically has a Z80 on it. So we have a Z80 on top of this board, which is plugged into the tester. Uh, there's a ribbon cable, which hooks up. Forget all these extra connectors, but basically there's a ribbon cable that goes along. This is about 300 centimeters long, 300, 300 millimeters long, I should say. And it's plugged in, if we ignore that one, that's just a dummy connector on the end of it. But you can see it's plugged into the Z80 socket of the board we're testing, which happens to be Super Cobra. Um, and it's effectively, this board is effectively running the game. It's running the original code, um, and it's just working as if the Z80 is plugged into the board. Uh, and you can see it's running quite happily. So, how do we do the other things with it? There's a lot of things you can do now with it. As I say, I'm still working on it. But as you can see, it's running away quite happily. The little light down there, which is the wait light for the tester, that indicates VRAM access, is flickering away. Uh, and that indicates, obviously as the game's running, it's obviously accessing memory, VRAM, and the light's flickering. This light here tells me that the emulator is actually enabled and it's running. Um, and the display at the moment, 6,000, I'll explain these things later on, but basically uh, not much is happening on the LED displays. The tester screen, as you can see, is that which looks almost like any other tester screen, except there's a few differences. For example, all the buttons are changed. Instead of having all your usual buttons down here, we've got some of them, we've got probe obviously still there and clear, but instead we have halt, wait, run, slow, quit. And up here we have read address, read data, we have a reset button, we have breakpoint set, breakpoint clear, then we have step plus one and step bytes. Um, and it's in the emulator mode. So that means if I wanted to say stop the game, I click wait. And it will say emulator in wait mode. If we go down here, the game is frozen effectively. Uh, so now the next thing is if I want to run it again, I click run. Run enabled, down here, and the game's running. There are some other cool things you can do with it. As well and this this is this is part of the problem I'm still trying to work this for other boards at the moment so you know there's you know I'm going through the fault finding process but another thing is there is a slow motion button on it which runs about 10% of the normal speed so if I click that 
you'll see the game will now run but very very slow ignore the little glitches because you will get you will get some glitches on the screen when you're running it in slow motion it's just unfortunately it's it's stopping and starting the process at quite a rate so you get the odd little glitch up here but it's nothing serious it's nothing not a fault as such it's just one of the quirks of what we're doing so you can see now it's actually sort of going extremely slow and if I put it into run mode it will speed up again slow motion mode and it slows it all down I'd say it's approximately 10% at the normal speed that's what I've calculated it at and as you can see you can see the thing working away quite happily you could even stop it at that point and the whole thing will freeze um, and if we put it back to slow again it will continue on for where it left off and you can see up there it says 10% speed enabled so how do we get this to work so if I stop it I could do wait when you put it in the wait mode what happens is the emulator is put basically put in a wait state and the processor is put in a wait state so the thing will basically still be enabled but it won't be doing anything now you have limited access to the board through the tester when the enable when the emulator is enabled or any of these modes because it, it basically shares the same bus the data and address buses as the as the z80 so you can't have two things trying to write the same data to one piece of RAM so you have limited access but having said that you can still do quite a bit with it if I do halt it will say all the buses are now defaulted and that means uh, it hands back the buses to the tester so you could do things with the tester if I do quit it takes it out of the emulator mode altogether and then we'll, you'll see all the things all come back so you get your ADT back up etc everything goes back to normal so there's different ways of running this, uh, we'll clear it all. One way, there's two ways of working this, you could either just type in things, for example if you just type in run, and then it will just go straight into the game and it will run it. As you can see it will just start, start up, so that's that one way of doing it. Um, if we type in say reset, the game will be resetted as you can see and it will start again so we have we have full control over resetting it full control over starting it stopping it and we can put it into a slow motion mode as well uh, we could also put it in a pause mode which is obviously when you wait so for example if I say uh, pause these are actually commands you can type in pause and that will just Pause the game, whatever state it's in. You can see it's just stopped, frozen on the track screen there. Um, and the thing, the important thing about this is there's a warning popped up because although it's paused it, the buses are still set for inputs on the tester. So you can't go writing to certain things. So for example, if I want to write an address, you'll see it'll come up and say, disabled emulator running, it won't let you do it. There's a very good reason for all of this, so there's a protection method that's been put in it just to make sure we don't blow up the test or the board or anything else. Um, the only way you can get out of that is if you actually sort of stop. And then it just goes back and then you can just write it again, as you can see. So when, when you do stop, it goes back to that. The other way we can do it is we can actually set it into an emulator mode and then the emulator mode is a little bit different to what we've just been doing with the you know the standard commands you can do the standard commands like that and you can set it all up but if you do the emulator mode it allows you to do a few other cool things with it so if we type in emulator oops if i spell it right of course it's initializing the emulator and it's calculated the rom space and now it's writing the files. The reason it does this is when you type in emulator and it sets up the emulator like this, it takes a copy of the entire ROM space of the board you're testing and stores it as a binary file. It uses that binary file as a lookup table. Um, and I'll explain what it's doing with that just now because 
Another cool thing you can do with it is we'll reset the game. When you go into the emulator mode, it changes all the buttons as well. So instead of typing commands, you just click things instead. So for example, run will start it up. And you can see I'll just show you it's starting up there. There you go, it's back again. So it's running the game basically, okay? Now, what you can also do with this is if, for example, we put it into the wait mode, and then we will reset it. So what we're doing is we're starting the, starting the game off at the very first address. And what I'm also going to do now is I'm going to change these bytes. So I'm going to put in 0, 0, say 8. OK. And now I'm going to do step bytes. And what this is going to do is it's going to step the code as the processor will run it. And it will disassemble it and it will show you the code as it's running it. As you can see it goes through the code. And that's it stopped at that point because I've only done 8 bytes. So what it will do is it will start at address 0, it says load A with 0, and it goes through that and then you've got a jump 0069. So funny enough, the next address is 0069 because that's how the Z80 is actually doing it. So it will disassemble the actual code as it runs it for you, but it will only do it in the step bytes mode. It won't do it when it's running it because obviously the, the process is running too fast for the tester to keep up with it. So you can do it that way. So for example, if you want to stop at a certain point, you can then look at the code individually. You can also do step one, step plus one, which will just do the next instruction for you. So it will step through. As it does it, it displays the address at the top. That is the address, the next address, well, the address it stopped at, and obviously the data. You'll also find that the LED display on the front will display it as well. So if I do step, you see it's going and it's, it's displaying that, the address and the data. So that's a pretty useful thing to have. Um, there are other things you can do as well. For example, if I go back out of that, we'll say do a reset on it and then run it again. So the game's now running again. As you can see, it's reset it and it's running. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to just basically stop it. So we'll wait till it gets into a certain point and then we'll stop the game. Like there. So the game's froze. Okay. And it says all buses are now default, which means I can do stuff. So, for example, if I want to set, we we know well. Let's we know where the RAM is on this board. So I think if I do, well, actually, rather than do that, we'll just show you doing it. So we should have tester control now. So I do a memory map. And there you go. I've got a memory map up. Okay. Um, there's the video RAM there, which is. 8800. So we're going to set that address to 8800. Like so. Um, ah, it's got to be problem because obviously it's set to that. So what we'll have to do is we'll have to do an Arduino code for this. So let's clear that. I'm going to run the game again just to. We'll reset the game and run it again. So now I know where that is. Right, so the game's running, as you can see it's going to stop, I'll just stop it at that point. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in star A8800, which will set the address to 8800, and then I'm going to do a RAM test on it, 0800. And test for me, hopefully. And it's past it. And now what we're going to do is, there's the game still frozen. I've just tested the video RAM while the game has actually been put in a wait state. And now I'm going to continue running the game, and you can see it will continue. It will move on from where it left off. So you can stop the game, you can do things to it, and then you can start the game up, and there's no difference. As you can see, it's running quite happily. And if I want to put it in slow motion. Slow it down like that. Speed it up. And away it goes. <clears throat> and 
we'll slow it down again. There you go, it slowed it all down. I'll speed it up again, and if I want to reset it, I just reset it. So it's working quite happily on Super Cobra. I've had it running on Galaxian. Um, I'm trying to make it so it works obviously on all the other ones. Uh, trying to get something to work on all boards is obviously a bit of a challenge because no two boards are exactly the same. So I'm working, I, I, I say I'm almost there with the debug process, almost getting it finished. And I say once it's completed and it's stable enough, then you'll be able to get a hold of one of these um, and then you can plug it into the tester. I say the tester code needs to be updated to run this. Uh, which has not been released yet because obviously the emulators aren't out there yet but I just thought I'd give you a sneak preview of how this is actually coming on uh, just to see that this is actually a possible thing that is actually happening um, so at the moment it's only working for Z80 processors obviously once we get this sorted out then other processors hopefully will be following but I say it's all down to how I can get them to do it um, so it's working quite well. So it's just a small board you plug into the front of the tester. Uh, the final design might be slightly different, but at the moment it's a plug-in board on the tester. Uh, and you say you have a normal cable with a header that plugs into the Z80 socket. Um, and that's it, really. Um, there are other things on this, but what I'll do is I'll do a follow-up video that will show some other things you can do with it. There are some very sort of clever little things you can do. For example, you can do screenshots, uh, and you can actually store the screen data as binary files and then you can actually load screen data back in again um, so you can do all sorts of things now I've got control of the actual game itself um, so in the next video I'll show you some other cool things you can do with this emulator um, but in the meantime hope hope you enjoyed this and I'll be doing some more videos fairly soon thanks a lot Bye.